Hey everybody, thanks for watching. This is Andrew from Schnauzer Face Minis. And today I've got something that's not a mini at all. This is a Gundam High Mock from Bandai. And I've been trying really hard to think of a pun to High Mock this character's name, but I just can't come up with anything. I want this guy to be a rusty, dirty mess, so I begin with reddish brown paints mixed with dry pigment. The pigment provides an extremely matte finish, which adds contrast between the rust and the fresh paint I'll apply later. And at this stage, I don't want even coverage. The rust tone should be patchy to provide a natural color variation. Next, I airbrush really thick mixes of pigment and water. I purposely don't dissolve the pigments all the way, so the mixture is grainy when it hits the model. To be honest, I wasn't sure that airbrushing pigments like this would do what I wanted it to do, but I was super excited to see that it does give the model a noticeably gritty texture all over. Spraying thick, semi-dissolved pigment mixes meant I had to stop and clean the airbrush much more often than I'd have liked, but this is a rare instance when under-thinning colors in the airbrush is a good thing. I airbrush a layer of Vallejo chipping medium, which provides a barrier between the rust and the paint that will follow. Later, I can reactivate the chipping medium with water, and the paint can easily flake away to reveal the rust. This is just like the hairspray weathering technique, which I've done in a previous video. I thought it worked out okay last time, so I decided to do it again. But literally two days ago, I get a comment on that video informing me that it is the worst technique ever. Seriously? That video has been up for five years and nobody bothered to tell me that it was the worst technique ever until after I'd already finished a new video using the same process? Come on guys, if you're going to be a hater, please be a timely hater. Hashtag timely hater. Like I said, you can use hairspray instead of chipping medium and get basically the same results. However, I found the paint came off easier with the chipping medium. That's not necessarily good or bad. It takes more effort to add chips with hairspray, but I felt like I had less control when using the chipping medium. Also, the medium adhered really poorly on metallics. I think the grainy, pigment-loaded base coat was able to soak in the chipping medium, but it never really settled into the slick metallic areas. Of course, it could also just be that I used it too heavily as well. So if you do use this stuff, I suggest applying it in a very light coat.
I've never worked with a Gundam model before, but I was really impressed with the overall quality and how easy it is to assemble. These things would also be super easy for conversion projects. In fact, I really regret not converting this into a Hulkbuster. And I think these would be great for anybody who's new to airbrushing because these models tend to have big, wide open spaces that are great for learning airbrush control. And it doesn't hurt that a lot of them are super cheap. I got this one on Amazon for $11. So I'm definitely happy that I sort of stumbled onto these models by accident. I was always vaguely aware of Gundam, but I never knew exactly what it was. It just sounds like a word that my old junior high school football coaches would yell when they were really angry and wanted to swear, but knew they couldn't. Like, Andrew, why can't you ever catch the Gundam football? Or, Andrew, if you needed an elective, why didn't you just take Gundam drama? Well, guess what, coach? I did take drama, and I was terrible at that, too. water loosens up the chipping medium so I can begin chipping away the paint. I focus mainly along the edges and anywhere else that I think might get a lot of wear and tear. thinner on the rusted areas, which reactivates the dry pigments. Then I drag the pigment straight down to simulate rust streaks. The enamel thinner is a little harsh, and you can see a few places where I applied it too heavily and it eroded some of the paint. Hashtag enamel erosion. Hashtag teeth. Hashtag what's the best time to go to the dentist. Hashtag tooth hurdy. Next, I mix some rust-colored weathering powders into oil paints. I load up a wide brush and just splatter the mix across the model. I added a tiny amount of mineral spirits to help the paint flow off the brush, but I kept the mix pretty thick. Doing this kind of reminds me of what Bob Ross used to call a bravery test, when he'd paint an enormous tree or something that covered up half the canvas. It is kind of scary to just start flinging brush loads of garbage on top of a model, but oil paints are really easy to remove if you're not happy with the final result. Once the model looks like it's covered in rusted chicken pox, I lightly airbrush mineral spirits to make the oils streak and blend together. As a reminder, please wear a respirator and work in ventilated areas when airbrushing oil or enamel thinners. Hashtag Gundam safety, hashtag Lungdom safety.
I apply several washes over the bronze areas to kill the metallic sheen. The washes are ink based so they're mostly transparent and won't fully cover the bronze no matter how many layers I apply. That gives me more flexibility to add lots of layers and different colors while still toning down the metallic effect. I use the washes fairly heavily and then wet blend other wash colors into them. This results in a somewhat blotchy mottled look that you might find on aged bronze or copper, but it probably won't work on areas that are supposed to be aluminum or silver or steel or anything like that. I figure that this guy has taken a pretty severe beating, so he's probably leaking oil. For that, I use Tamiya Smoke. This color goes on a little bit thick, and it dries semi-transparent and glossy, so you end up with a pretty convincing oil streak effect. And I know what you're going to say, Gundam models don't run on oil, Gundam runs on Duncan, but I don't think Tamiya even makes a paint to create coffee stains, so what was I supposed to do? That about wraps it up for this video. This model is available on eBay, so check the link in the description if you're interested. And I know this was a little different from the wargaming pieces that I usually paint, but I hope it was still a fun video. And I've started to streamline my workflow a little bit, so hopefully I'll have new videos out sooner rather than later. So be good to each other, and thanks for watching.